Hi there, and welcome to this lesson on Pure Mathematics 3. And in this lesson, we're looking at how you differentiate sec, cosec, and cot, and we'll also be looking at how you differentiate inverse trigonometric functions. But first of all, in previous lessons, we've already met the following. The differential of sine x is cos x, the differential of cos x is minus sine x, and in the last lesson, we used the quotient rule to prove that the differential of tan x is sec squared x. Now, it's also possible to use the quotient rule to prove that if y is cosec x, then dy by dx is minus cosec cot x, that the differential of sec x is sec x tan x, and that the differential of cot x is minus cosec squared x. Now, you should try and learn all six of those if you can do, and it's worth having them written down somewhere handy when you're working on questions. With all of these differentials, you do have a choice when it comes to what happens if you have some multiple of x. So if you have something like y equals cot kx, there are six more formulas that you can learn, like dy by dx is minus k times cos x squared kx, if y is cot x. But I think the easiest thing to do is just be comfortable using the chain rule. Uh, with all of these formulas where you have k in front of the x, some number of x, then if you're happy with the chain rule, then you don't need to learn six extra formulas. Okay, we'll have a look at a few examples. Now, these are the three, I think, formulas that you'll be using for all of these questions, the differential of cosec, sec, and cot. Have a go at differentiating these. Beware, none of them are straightforwards. All of them either involve use of the chain rule or the product rule, or both the chain rule and the product rule. Anyway, I'll let you have a go at them yourself first. So have a go, pause the video, and then come back to me again when you're ready. Okay, let's have a look at these. So first of all, if y equals cosec 2x, you look up the differential for cosec, which is if you differentiate cosec, you get minus cosec cot. So dy by dx will be minus cosec 2x, cot 2x. Now, because we've got 2x, we've got a function of a function. Cosec is the outside function, and we've just differentiated that. The inside function is the 2x. We need to differentiate that as well. When we differentiate 2x, we'll get 2. So that gives us cosec 2x, cot 2x times by 2, which would tidy up to give you that. Example 2, y equals sec cubed x. You don't have to do this, but it makes things slightly easier if you choose to write that as sec x cubed. Those two things mean exactly the same thing, but when you're differentiating, it's just slightly easier if you choose to write it in this form then it's absolutely clear that the outside function is the cubed. That's what we have to differentiate first. So when we do dy by dx, we get 3 times by sec x. The power goes down by 1 to 2. Then we have to differentiate the inside function, the sec x. And when you differentiate that, you get sec x times by tan x. Multiplying these sec x's together and tidying things up, gives you 3 sec cubed x times by tan x. Question 3, y equals x to the 4 cot x. Now, this time it's not the chain rule we're using, it's the product rule, because we've got two functions being multiplied together. The first function is x to the 4, and that is being multiplied by the cotangent of x. So we'll need to write down the x to the 4, differentiate cot x, then write down cot x, and differentiate the x to the 4. So there's writing down the x to the 4. If we differentiate cot, we get minus cos x squared x. And then writing down the cot and differentiating the x to the 4 gives us the 4x cubed. That we can factorize, taking x cubed outside the brackets. And we can tidy that up a little bit just by swapping those two terms over to give us x cubed into 4 cot x minus x cos x squared x. Okay, this last one really is quite confusing because it uses the product rule because we've got e to the minus 2x multiplied by the cosec of 4x. 
But both of these two functions, you're going to have to use the chain rule when you differentiate them. Both of them are a function of a function. So we've got e to the power of minus 2x. e is the outside function. Minus 2x is the inside one. Cos x the outside function. 4x is the inside one. But first of all, using the product rule, write down e to the minus 2x, which is what we've done there. Differentiate cosec 4x. When you differentiate cosec, you get minus cosec cot. So that gives us the minus cosec 4x cot 4x. But then we need to remember that there's a second function. The 4x is the inside function. We need to differentiate that as well. And that gives us the times by 4. That's the first half of the product rule done. Now we write down the cosec 4x and we differentiate the e to the minus 2x. Differentiating e to the minus 2x, first of all, we differentiate the e. When we do that, nothing changes. We just get e to the minus 2x. And then using the chain rule, we need to differentiate the minus 2x. That gives us the times by minus 2. So there's quite a lot going on there. Now, it is possible to multiply things out and tidy things up a bit. That would give us that. We've got two big terms here. And quite a lot is common to both of them. So it is possible to factorize this to tidy it up even more. So taking outside the brackets, minus 2e to the minus 2x times by cosec 4x. If we times that by 2 cot 4x, we'll get this first term. And if we times it by 1, then we'll get the second term here. And that, I think, is the, it's the tidiest way of writing the answer. OK, we'll now have a look at how you differentiate inverse trig functions. And we'll prove the formula for what happens if you have inverse sine. First of all, just a reminder, there are two ways with trig functions of writing down the inverse function. Then you can write down sine x to the minus 1, because minus 1 does mean inverse. But because minus 1 also looks like a power of minus 1, which can mean reciprocal, it can create confusion. So it's probably preferable to write it down in the more old-fashioned language, which is y equals arc sine x. That just means inverse sine. Anyway, given that y is equal to the inverse of sine x, we're asked to prove that the differential of that is 1 divided by the square root of 1 minus x squared. Now, the proof is quite complicated. It's got a few steps. You have to use a few different things. But I will let you have a go at doing it yourself first. But I'll give you some clues for what you need to use along the way. We start off by taking sines of both sides. So we get sine of y on the left. Sine and inverse sine cancel each other out. So we get x on the right. We then need to differentiate that with respect to y. So we find dx by dy. Then we use the fact that dy by dx is 1 over dx by dy in order to get dy by dx. And lastly, we'll also need to use the identity sine squared y plus cos squared y is equal to 1. So quite a lot going on, but I'll let you have a go. So pause the video, see if you can work your way through this, and then come back to me when you're ready. OK, well, let's have a look. So the starting point is y equals inverse sine of x, arc sine x, and that's where we're trying to get to, that that's the differential. As I said, first thing we do is just take the sine of both sides. So that gives us sine y on the left. Sine and inverse sine, they cancel each other out, so you just get x on the right. Swapping sides makes things a little bit easier. Then we're going to find dx by dy. So we're differentiating both sides with respect to y. That gives us dx by dy on the left. And differentiating sine y with respect to y gives us cos y. dy by dx is 1 over that. So it's the reciprocal of dx by dy. So dy by dx, which is what we want to know, is 1 divided by the cosine of y. Now, using the identity sine squared plus cos squared equals 1, and this bit isn't obvious at all, cos y is the same as the square root of 1 minus sine squared y. We're just using this identity to find cos y. Now, 1 minus sine squared um, is equal to 1 minus x squared, 
We know that from back here, where we said sine y is equal to x. So we've just substituted in x for sine y. And that's where we were trying to get to. So the start point is y equals the inverse sine of x, arc sine x. If that's the case, then the differential of that dy by dx is equal to 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. So that's the one we've just proved for inverse sine. You can do something very similar for inverse cos and work out inverse tan as well. For arc cos, the differential is very similar, but you have a minus here. So it's minus 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. And for arc tan x, the easiest way to do it, um, well, no, never mind about that. For arc tan x, the differential is 1 over 1 plus x squared. You don't have to prove these, but you do have to be able to use them. So we'll have a quick look at uh, a few examples. First of all, if y equals arc sine 5x. Uh, secondly, if y equals arc cos x squared. And thirdly, if y equals arc tan e to the x. So as with the previous examples, you will need to use these formulae and also you'll be using the chain rule on each of these three questions. I'll let you have a go yourself first, pause the video, and then come back to me again when you're ready. Okay, let's have a look. So first of all, differentiating y equals arc sine x. That's the formula there. So when you differentiate it, you get 1 over the square root of 1 minus whatever we have here squared. Now, in this case, we've got 5x. So it'll be 5x that has to be squared. So you'll get 1 over the square root of 1 minus 5x all squared. Now, because we've got uh, a function of a function here, it's the inverse sine of 5x. We also need to differentiate the inside function, the 5x. So we'll have to times by 5. And that gives us 5 over the square root of 1 minus 25x squared. Okay, the second question, y equals the inverse sine of x squared. Now, whatever we've got written here, that has to be squared in the square root. So if it's inverse sine of x squared, it's x squared that has to be squared. So you'll get 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared, all squared. And then using the chain rule, when we differentiate x squared, we get the 2x here. Tidying that up gives us minus 2x divided by the square root of 1 minus x to the power of 4. And the third question, y equals arc tan e to the power of x. So whatever's here needs to be squared, and we just have 1 over 1 plus that squared. So when we differentiate that, we'll get 1 over 1 plus e to the x all squared. Again, it's a function of a function. Arctan's the outside function, but we also need to differentiate the inside function. When we differentiate e to the x, we just get e to the x. So that's all your times by. Tidying that up gives us e to the x on the top, and e to the x squared, using the rule for powers, um, that gives us e to the power of 2x on the bottom, plus 1. Example 4. Given that y is equal to arctan 1 minus x over 1 plus x, prove that the differential of that is minus 1 over x squared plus 1. Now, there's two parts to this, really. The first part is just using the formula for how you differentiate inverse tan. But when we use the chain rule, there'll be a point in the middle where we also have to differentiate this function, 1 minus x over 1 plus x. Now, that's a quotient, so when we get to the part of the question where we need to differentiate this function inside here, we'll have to use the quotient rule. I'll let you have a go at doing all of that, so pause the video, have a go, and then come back to me again when you're ready. Okay, let's have a look. So, dy by dx. It all looks a bit complicated, this. The first thing we have to do is do 1 over 1 plus x squared. 
Now, in this case, x is all of that expression, 1 minus x over 1 plus x. So we get that squared on the bottom. And then this is the bit where we're going to have to use the chain rule. We've got a function of a function. And the inside function is the 1 minus x over the 1 plus x. So we're also going to have to differentiate that. Now, if y is u over v, then that is the quotient rule. So to differentiate this, if you've got 1 minus x over 1 plus x, we write down the 1 plus x, we differentiate the 1 minus x. Take away from that, write down the 1 minus x, differentiate the 1 plus x. And on the bottom, we get the 1 plus x all squared. So that's using the quotient rule to differentiate this bit. The top tidies up to minus 2, and on the bottom we just leave it as 1 plus x squared. So going back to this, divide by dx, we haven't done anything with that first term, but we've now worked out this differential, which is equal to minus 2 over 1 plus x squared. So we just substitute that in here. We still need to do a little bit of work, but really it is just algebra to tidy things up. We've got two fractions being multiplied together. Multiplying the tops gives us the minus 2. Multiplying the bottoms uh, will give us this. You'll have 1 times the 1 plus x squared, and then this expression times by the 1 plus x squared. Here, we've got 1 plus x squared on the top and 1 plus x squared on the bottom. They can cancel with each other. So this term here simplifies to 1 minus x squared. Then we need to multiply out the brackets, which gives us that. And then various things cancel or join together, which gives us minus 2 over 2x squared plus 2. All of those are multiples of 2, so we can divide through by 2. And finally, we get to what they were asking us to prove, which is that dy by dx is equal to minus 1 over x squared plus 1. Well done if you manage to get all the way through that yourself. Okay, that gets us to the end of this lesson. If you've got the textbook, then turn to page 140 and have a go at exercise 6a. Thank you very much for listening and cheerio.